My guest today is Esteban Garcia. Esteban, how are you, my friend? Doing great, David. It's so great to be on your show again. Oh, yeah. It's been a really long time. We were just looking this up. Episode 289, back in 2013, talking about TFS 2013. That's a long time between a, interviews, that, which I, I blame for which I blame myself. I have <laughs> been negligent about that. That is a long time. So much has happened in technology, and we we were both just little kids back then. Look at us now, <laughs> uh, eleven we're, years later, talking. It's crazy. We're all grown up now. <laughs> a lot has happened, not only in technology but in your life. What are you doing now? Oh my God! Yeah, the, my my the last ten years, my career has been has made a complete uh, you know shift. So uh, a lot of entrepreneurial things. I I uh, started a business. I sold a business. I joined a large uh, company, and then uh, a couple of years ago, I I joined a company called uh, Zevia as the managing director of the Microsoft Services line here in the U.S. Uh, so still doing a lot of technology things, leading teams, helping. Uh, Technology, uh, helping companies adopt technology, uh, and it's it's I'm just having fun. At, at the end of the day, I'm just really enjoying what I'm doing, helping companies. That's the adopt name of the technology. game. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, and uh, Zevia, I keep I've, I've just started getting back into the conference speaking thing, and I keep running into Zevia folks at these conferences that I run at. So it's, it sounds like you're putting together an amazing team. Yeah, we really do have an amazing team of, of technologists throughout the world, including over 20 Microsoft MVPs, five regional directors, and obviously uh, many other people who are just really, really amazing throughout throughout the company. So I'm I'm, I'm really I'm really uh, having fun working with some very smart people. So it's great. Awesome, I love that. All right, well, let's talk a little about um, uh, developer productivity and some of the tools that your team, you and your team, are using, specifically GitHub Copilot. Tell, tell me a little yeah. about that. Yeah, sure. So most of my career has been in the developer productivity world. Last time we talked, uh, we were talking about TFS and, uh, you know, over time was, was uh, you know, helping organizations with Azure DevOps and then GitHub. And the theme of that, that I've always had is like, how do we help developers go a little bit faster uh, to get their applications into the cloud through processes, through tools as well. And over the last couple of years, there's been this shift uh, powered by AI to help developers by giving them some more tools and some more intelligence to be able to uh, do uh, do things that maybe you know you're doing over and over and over, or maybe someone else figured out the problem that you, maybe you went over to uh, and, and you searched for the answer. But maybe mm -hmm. if you have something that uh, codes alongside you and is able to look at what your your code is doing, your the intention that you try to do, and is able to almost like autocomplete on steroids. That you know that that's sort of what 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 this is. And it's it's been a, just a, a really interesting thing to see take over the developer world because it really is making a uh it's it's it, it change it's changing the way that we as developers think about the the everyday coding tasks that we perform. Yeah, I'm a big fan of GitHub Copilot. I've been using it a lot lately, but I think there's a misperception about Copilot that it's it's gonna it's gonna do my job. It's gonna write my code for me. That I'll, all I need is GitHub Copilot, and everything will be okay. And that's not really the whole story. No, it's not. And and really, it's in the name, right? It it is like Copilot, right? If I'm yes. trying to go somewhere, if I'm driving my car. If I'm flying a plane, at the end of the day, I'm not going to say, here, you, you you take over and you drive for me, right? I'm going to say, hey, help me get over to a specific place. At the end of the day, I, as a developer, I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to set the intent of what I'm trying to do. I'm you are the, the pilot. Patterns. I am the pilot. I'm setting the architecture patterns. I'm setting the, the, you know, all the different things that we're trying to do. And I'm saying, hey, for this one thing I'm trying to do, is there a better way for me to write a test around this? Or, hey, I just run into... Uh, an error here. I can't figure out. Can you help me be a second virtual set of eyes for for, for my code? Uh, and that that's really really important. It's not just sprinkle copilot and all of a sudden you go from a junior developer to senior developer. It's right. really more about, hey, I am trying to do this technology. Come and help me and bring all the you know hundreds of thousands or millions of developers that have contributed code for copilot to learn to come and help me kind of keep moving forward. 
Okay, and I think to paraphrase what you just said, you, I as the the developer, I have to know what my goals are. I have to know what I'm trying to design, what I'm trying to accomplish, uh, in order to tell Copilot what kind of code to generate. Yeah, exactly, and 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 then it leads into the way that you interact with it, right? There's a right. couple of different ways to interact with it. Sometimes it is more of a uh, uh, an autocomplete type thing, but it's also more of a prompt when you're saying, "Hey, compiler, I'm trying to do this. Help me with that. Give me some options." That that is the type of thing where you are leading it, leading the way to it. Yeah, well, let's talk about that that the prompt part of it. There's a there's a right way of asking the questions of Copilot. The Copilot will give a better answer if we can phrase that prompt in a, a more effective way. Yeah, for sure. So I think uh, whenever you're using GitHub Copilot, the, the first thing that I would suggest people to do is, you know, yeah, get get acquainted with the tool and get acquainted with it with the w different ways that you're able to do the slash, uh, different prompts that you're able to say, hey, write tests and do different things. But more importantly is learn how do you do actual prompt engineering, right? It is a different way of writing code, right? So I could just say, give me a loop and it will give you a loop. It'll be a great loop, right? <laughs> but think about it and say like, well, you, you could say, I'm a solutions architect and I am trying to build this type of application. There's, there's this number of tiers in the application and there's a microservice that's doing this. Help me do this. But right? so you're giving the, uh, the, the copilot a lot of context about what you're doing and you're kind of, nudging it in a way that says, okay, now I get what you're trying to do. So for that specific context or for that specific scenario, this would be the, the right path. So then it will start scaffolding things for you. It might create a loop that does something specific based on what your prompt is. That shouldn't just be a very simple, give me a loop, right? There, there's, there, there's more to it. So I think, I think being able to have almost a conversation with it and even as the copilot gives you back information, being able to say, Yes, and also this, or yeah, you didn't get it quite right, try this. So, so you're having almost like a back and forth conversation until you get it right. It's like, yeah, that's it, and you move on. So, so almost like don't take the first answer, see what you get, and kind of keep going back and forth with it. Can you give me some examples of some good prompts that would uh, somebody could use to use, effectively use GitHub Copilot? Yeah, for sure. So let's say that you have, uh, let, let's start with, with two different scenarios. You're about to start a brand new application. You don't even know where to start. And you, and you're able to provide Copilot, say, Hey, Copilot, I'm trying to create a utility application or a utility tool that's going to go and fetch data and come back. And I need it to run in the cloud. I need it to run in Azure specifically. So now you're giving Copilot not only the thing that you're, that it's trying to do, you're also going to give it, uh, some context about where it's going to run. And it's saying, and then your last question will be scaffold an application that will help you do that. And it will build out your imp, the, the, the entire file structure for the application that will do that. You also give it the, 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 the language. I want this to be, be written in, in Java, on Python, C Sharp. And they'll build it out for you. So that's a brand new application. Another one would be you open up your an existing repo and you are going through the application and you're like, oh, wow. My, uh, my coworker, David, wrote this five years ago, and I, I'm going to go and, and, and look at this code. Even David could... doesn't know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> Even David, exactly. Uh, yeah, because I went to David, and David was like, I don't remember. I did this five years ago. Why are you asking me? So that was David to... V1 that wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now I'm going to go over to the application and say, well, I could spend a whole day trying to figure out what this thing does. Or I could say, hey, Copilot, help me understand this code. So now you're asking Copilot a more, uh, you know, you're asking it to go through and either annotate the code you're, or you're asking it to take, look at the code and give you a, a, an English description of what's happening. Mm -hmm. So now that, that, so that those are the, the, the type of scenarios that, that are, um, uh, really useful to start with. There's others more very specific, like, Hey, I need to, I need to write a loop and look at the, look at the thing that we're doing. I need to write a loop that's going to give you this type of calculation and then right. it's, it's, it's able to do that. Yeah, that latter one I find really effective if I'm using a language that I'm not familiar with or a library that I'm not familiar with. It just saves me the trouble of searching online for sample code and uh, yeah. just give me a starter. You know, here I'm working in, I don't know, Rust. I never, I've never written a line of Rust in my life. But mm -hmm. <laughs> please access yeah. this. Uh, MongoDB database using Rust and return the top 10 uh, states by revenue. <laughs> you 
you know. Yeah. No, I it's, could, it's I could yeah. I could a bit of a bit of internet social could show me how to do that, or I could just ask Copa yeah. to give me a start. Yeah, I, I, an interesting one that I did recently. I, I don't write as much code as be, as before, but I I do write some code still. And I, I was I had a, I had this this uh, one uh, iterative uh, code that that was that was trying to figure out some calculations, but I ran into a, an infinite loop. And I couldn't figure mm. out where it was where where was it infinite looping in. Huh. So I asked Copilot to it's like, hey, where is the where is the infinite loop? And it actually gave me pointed oh, out like your problems here. You and then it suggested what I needed to do, which is like uh, initializing a variable before. It's like, oh, right. okay. And and that was that's an interesting. Re that's like, really impressive because yeah. it's a kind of yeah. an indirect question you're asking it. You know yeah, that there's exactly. you know the symptom, but uh, somewhere sometimes it's a, a very subtle thing. Yeah. As to why it's not exiting this loop. Uh, I haven't tried something like that. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about um, for, um, you know, you mentioned working with somebody else's code and explaining that code. I, I also find that really useful. Um, how does it work with sets of code? I mean, I've, mostly what I use it, I use it in a single module. I'm writing a single class. I'm adding a method to that class, and it's it's really good for that. What about if I'm looking at an entire repository? So um, it, it, it works in a couple of different ways. If you're just working within your VS code, it's going to look at all the files that are open and it's going to okay. learn from what's happening within all the files that are open. If you're using Copilot within a GitHub repository, it becomes a little more powerful because now it has access to your entire set of code, uh, the entire code base, and it's going to create uh, methods or classes that are that follow this, the, the patterns that you have across your, your application. Uh, and then you're able to start creating things. So, so there's a bunch of slash commands within GitHub Copilot mm -hmm. where you have to say things like slash doc, document my code, right. slash explain, explain what's happening here. Yep, slash test, so ones, write some tests for Yeah, exactly. Um, slash generate. So I like that one because slash generate will generate code based on the question that you, that you are asking, but it's going to look at your entire application or the context of what you have. Again, if, if you're just locally on VS code, it's just going to look at the files you have open. Uh, if you're within a GitHub repo, it's going to say, oh, okay, this is how you're uh, creating things within your application. And it's going to, so it's not going to look like a foreign uh, looking method, right? It's going to say, oh, okay, well, this is, this is the naming conventions that David's using. Let's follow those, those, those same ones or um, uh, it's going to, it's not going to create a brand new connection string. It's going to say, oh, you're reusing that. Let me reuse that. So it, it understand the context of where you are. Oh, interesting. So um, I, that, I, I have used this in Visual Studio Code. And if I have code open and I have, oh, naming conventions or libraries that I'm using, it, the, the code it generates will tend to use those same naming conventions, those same design patterns, those same libraries. Uh, but you're saying in, if I'm going into GitHub and using Copilot, if I'm going to github.com and open a repository, I don't have to have those files open. It just knows because I'm Correct. in that repository. Yeah. Correct, and, and and at that point it becomes now you're you're stepping into GitHub Copilot Enterprise, right? So there's a, there's there's a there's a oh, licensing. Talk, yeah, talk a little about the the different versions of Copilot. Yeah, so you have a GitHub Copilot um, for business. So you you have a user one, you have one for business and one for um, one for enterprise. And the enterprise one gives you some more power within GitHub uh, .com itself. It also allows you to have some controls over uh the type of code that it brings in for example if you are an enterprise says well don't bring me in any code that would uh, cause any problems with uh with uh copyright infringement for example mm -hmm. you can you can make sure like don't train on anything outside code only train on my code right Got so it. you're able to do th those type of things uh copile for businesses for you to be able to use within your uh, your 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 company's code repositories are able to manage licenses at the at the enterprise level or at the business level, and then Copilot uh, just individual users. I can't remember the, the exact name of the of the license. You're you're just able to just have use Copilot for your own own use. All of them you can use on Copilot. Uh, oh, sorry, on Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio. Uh, also, JetBrains uh, they, they release a, an, an extension for it. Um, and then uh, Copal Enterprise, you're able to use it within GitHub.com. This is really interesting. I think I think it's fair to say that you can become a lot more productive when you're using GitHub Copilot if you take some time to think about and understand this prompt engineering you're talking about. It is there. Where does one go to learn this and to become better at it? 
Yeah, that's that's, that's a good point. So I think that first, yes, Copilot is a tool that mm -hmm. you as a as a developer want to master it, and the way to master it is going to be through the, your ability to have those conversations with with uh, Copilot through prompt engineering, knowing you know asking the first question and not necessarily just be happy with the first answer and go like, okay, mm -hmm. well, understand the answer and ask follow-up questions, follow-up questions until you get what you're looking for and then go. Um, there, there, there's, there's, um, within, um, the, the GitHub website, there are some, uh, you know, co-pilot and enablement videos and things like that, that give you some guidance on it. But at the end of the day, it's, this is really more about you just trying it out. Right. I, I like many of these tools, it's it, you can read about it. There, there's articles on, on prompt engineering, but it's not now you taking that and, make, and put it into action. You know, get mm -hmm. Copilot and start start asking and, and prompting until you get what you what you want. Uh, I typically don't just go with the first answer again because sometimes it's like, okay, oh, okay yeah, the, the, let's give you more context. I like it, but now this, now this. Okay, great. Now let's go. I, that's that's really what, yeah. What so you're saying the best way to learn is really just to dive in and try it and try, try yeah, different sure. types of prompts and see what works. And if it doesn't work the first time, you know, follow up. Give me a better yeah. answer. <laughs> exactly. And I've I've seen people try it once and they're like, oh no, this this didn't give me what I was looking for, so I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, well, well, think about how much faster you're coding because of what what you're getting back. And then, uh, you know, keep trying it because if you keep at it and it, it kind of becomes your way of working, you're mm -hmm. going to see a big, uh, you know, a, 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 an improvement over time on your ability to interact with it, uh, get some things done. There's some tedious tasks that we do as developers. You're like, okay, let's get Copilot to help me with that piece. Sure. And then you're able to start. The scaffolding, uh, you know. the plumbing. Yeah, the stuff that exactly. You get, sometimes at a minimum, all it's doing is saving you typing. And that's exactly. value. There's value in just that part alone. Yeah. Uh, there is also, there's a fear, I think, among some developers that tools like GitHub Copilot, these generative AI tools, that they're going to replace us. That now we won't, you know, people won't need developers anymore because the code can write itself. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I think if you look at through history as developers, we've run into things where it says, oh, now this thing, new thing got introduced. That's going to get, I'm going to replace by that. Um, and, the, and, and the reality is that I think it's really more about making sure that now we have tools that allow us to do more. I think Copilot is not going to replace you. It is a Copilot. So it's you, it's you as a developer, you're able to kind of guide it. And I think it's yet another tool that you can add to your tool and say, well, I'm a, de a developer that knows how to use Copilot. And mm -hmm. because of that, I can either go faster, or I can write better code, I can write better uh, test cases. And I think if you look ahead, maybe a couple of years from now, maybe someone that is a developer that knows how to use Copilot is going to get the job that you as a developer that didn't learn Copilot is not going to get, right? So I think it's really more about, you're not going to get replaced by Copilot, but you're going to get passed by someone that understands Copilot. Uh, I kind of look at it from, you know, if we go back 25 years ago when the modern IDE got introduced and then we start getting, you know, uh, uh, what turned into Visual Studio, Yes, you could still write code with Notepad or Notepad++, but someone that has the, the modern IDEs, they're going to go faster. And that's just, right. that's just what it is. Yeah, you can't handcraft every single thing. But nowadays, we're using those IDEs, uh, VS Code and others, because you're able to get so much more with it. So I think uh, we're not yet at that point, but I think if you look for ahead a year or two years from now, um, it's, it's the people that have embraced AI, uh, and a co-pilot to be able to do their work are, are going to be the ones that are able to just do a little bit more. I love this analogy about uh, how IDEs helped us. They weren't necessary because you could still use it, but they did make us more efficient. And I, I, it, it brought to mind a conversation I had many years ago where I was showing my manager uh, how the tools could help me write some of this code and, and build some of the codes and reduce the time it takes. And his response is, well, if you're a good developer, you should be able to write that yourself. And my response was, true but if you save time writing this code that gives you that frees up time to do something more maybe something more important maybe something more interesting and yeah uh, exactly and i think the same thing is true here if we let these tools take care of the plumbing and the scaffolding or save us for having to do these internet searches and read the read a lot of documentation and code samples now we can take that time that we saved and solve business problems which is really what exactly. we're being paid for 
Right, exactly. You're able to spend more of that time doing that and experimenting with different things. And if you're able to get Copilot to get you maybe 75% there or kind of guide you there, then you're able to like fill in the blanks with the business problems to your point and you know, keep continue using Copilot as your helper. Again, this, this, that's what it, it's, it's meant to be an AI assistant, yeah. not the, 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 the tool that's going to take over what you do. All right, well, that's good. I now have a little bit of job yeah. security here. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, is there anything we haven't covered that you feel is critical to this topic? Um, um, no, uh, the one thing that you, uh, if, if you want to, but this might open up a, a can of worms is, you know, wh where is Copilot going next? Or what are the things that we see it, uh, it get, getting injected into? But that, that's, that, that's up to you if you want to uh, talk about that or not. Well, let's that, let, that let's, let's time box it. Let's talk five minutes on that. What, what, what's the okay. future of Copilot and other generative AI tools? Um, so if you look at what GitHub has already shown and Microsoft shown in, uh, at Build a, a month ago and, and where you kind of see things going is you're going to start seeing Copilot showing up in some of the, uh, you know, shift left with, on security right now, all of a sudden Copilot and advanced security might be working together in the sense that you say, Hey, we found an issue. Let's help Copilot. Let's have Copilot help us fix that security issue. Right. Um, uh, the, 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 the other, uh, uh, place where you're going to start seeing it is ways where you're able to go right into your repo and describe to Copilot, what is it that you want to do? And then Copilot is going to propose uh, a pull request for you. It's like, Hey, mm -hmm. Copilot, based on what you, based on what I asked you to do, Copilot is going to come and say, uh, how about this? And then you're able to, again, have control of what get, what gets, uh, approved. Uh, so that that's going to be right on on the on the browser through something called a, a GitHub Copilot uh, uh, workspaces. So that's okay. something that they announced at, uh, at Build. It was really cool to see how how you're able to interact with it. So I think uh, on the GitHub side, Copilot is of course here to stay, and you're going to see it getting injected into a lot more of the platform and the way that. Uh, in, in a way that allows you to just do a little bit more uh, as a developer and as a team. Excellent. Well, thanks for that perspective. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. And I appreciate your time, Esteban. You have a great day. Uh, no, you too. Thank you, David. Throughout my career, I've been so fortunate to be able to meet so many amazing friends in the, in the technology space. I mean, just getting to know you, David, for so many years, thanks to being in this, it just makes me uh, one of the luckiest people around. So thank you.